something. Finally, finally good to uh, get a hold of you, man. Can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can. Better. Can you see us? Yeah, I see all y'all. I'm faded. Can y'all see me? Yeah, yeah, we're good. What's second, fellas? Hey, nothing, man. Nice to finally meet you. Hey, nice to meet you, you man. Yeah, y'all nice got me fucked up over here. All you little, y'all got me fucked up. Just know that. All y'all got me fucked up right now, okay? Hey, that's what's up. Hey, you know, just for the record, and just so we uh, we say it correctly, how do we pronounce your name? All right, my official name is Eric Adger. Okay. We like Adger, that, that yeah. bad animal, the badger. We were right, okay. That's a weird, yeah. It's Eric Adger, all right? Okay, cool. That's what's Eric. up. Andrew. So, I'm um, I'm glad to be here, man. I really appreciate you guys, man. Because first of all, I want to say that the Cottonmouth King legacy, man, is in the rap books. It's, it's in the, it's in the books. You mm -hmm. understand? All the way from from Sugar Hill, to Curtis Blow, to Run DMC, to LL Cool J, to Rakim, Big Daddy Kane, uh, the '90s hip hop Wu Tang, and then when the Cottonmouth Kings got signed in '98, they're what they did till today, they're going to be in the rap books. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. They're in Absolutely. the books, man. The so I, I, I'm glad and I appreciate you guys hitting me up, man, so I can kind of just yap a little bit about my, my contribution to them dudes because they're in the rap books, bro, and their legacy yeah. will live on. It's going to live on, 20 plus and counting. And yeah, you, you know, uh, to add to what you're saying too is like uh, they, the way that they they kind of went independent and just um, did everything like 100 percent their own. Like that's that's something to uh, like a lot of people you know respect, and a lot of people don't bring up their name when they're talking about you know fully independent artists. So they definitely paved the paved the path for sure. Yo, here's the thing. I want to get into my contribution to the Cottonmouth Kings and how yeah. it's introduced. Them yeah. and just a little, a lot of history, but just the, the, the roads that we took to get to there because a lot of people don't know about the Cottonmouth Kings. They not only were they independent, but they actually were signed to Ruthless Records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, if you guys know that. Right. I don't know if you guys know that. They were yeah. signed, they had a deal with Jerry Heller and Easy E. Okay. Uh, and they had a deal. Look it up. They had a deal with Ruthless Records. I don't know if they were the Cottonmouth Kings then, but they had a fucking deal with Jerry Heller and Ruthless Records before they went independent and then got the deal with Capitol Records. So I hope people should know that. I want people to know that. X, X would mention that from time to time that he he uh, w like worked with Easy e and all that, but um, mm -hmm. he never really mentioned what other members were with them during that time. And he never really went into too much detail. Like, yeah, I was always super interested as well. So. Well, if I'm, if I'm, wait, 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 not to cut you off. If I'm correct. People need to know this. The original members of Cottonmouth, and this is before I even got involved from what I understand, okay. um, was Brad, d Loke, and Richter. Wow. I could be wrong. Well, I know Saint came, but I, somebody was trying to say Richter was there before Saint. I don't know. Rick, when Rick, I got there, Saint was there. But Rick, somebody Rick, tried to say Richter was there. Clear that up for me. DJ Eric was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Richter have known each other longer even than my cousin came in, but when they actually formed the group group, it was uh, Loke, Richter, and and uh, and my cousin, and and X was kind of more like uh, not necessarily like okay in it in it he was more like uh, I, I don't really know how to explain it he was kind of like the overseer of everything the hype man kind of. The the you know like Big Daddy X dude that's why they call him Big Daddy X. Yeah, he he, didn't have the, he he wasn't the rapper in the group. He he definitely was more like the he was kind of like the almost like Easy E the guy who put everybody together. Well, not put them together, but he came in and helped everybody put it together, right? Mm -hmm. Orchestrated. Yeah, he orchestrated it all. And yeah, then, like to and, 
to the fourteen year old me, with like I always kind of looked at him as like an on stage manager type of position. Right. That's what it looked like. So so when when, when so when X kind of uh, or not when X when uh, Richter kind of like stepped out to handle his legal shit, that's when uh, X took on a way bigger role. You know, um, from my understanding, and and, and that's kind of what it, it it looks like. You know, from from everything that I've seen. You know, kind of behind. And add to that, Jerry, like you said, uh, you, you, you start noticing a lot less uh, lyrically about uh, Riverside. You start seeing a lot more promotion of Orange County, that right. kind of vibe, you know, right. which is which obviously from X. Well, yeah, because at that time, dude, like I was telling you guys before, was at that at that time in, in 97, 98, 99, you remember, you know, all those big bands were Orange County bands, you know, uh, no doubt offspring all these bands right so they're they're like trying to sell to a market orange county punk like skater punks you know hip-hop hip-hop punk like but adding their own mix to it mm -hmm. but that was the that was the market dude or orange county like mm -hmm. and, and, and it was it was but but i'll say this the deal with easy e and them had to have been before he passed away rest in peace yeah. however when, when you talk 97 98 99 now here's here's where I come in. I met him in '98. Okay. Okay, and so I'll take it back a little bit because I really want the Cottonmouth King fans, man. I mean, because there's people my age, man, and I'm an old dude, as well as like I said, the tradition of the Cottonmouth Kings has lived on so long. You got new fans. Yeah. yeah. But I, I just want people to know, you know who I am and, and my. Uh, inter inter interaction with, with them because it's crazy, man. Because let me tell you something. Them, my white brothers from the OC connected with a brother from South Central LA and it's a crazy uh, way how we got there. Yeah. yeah. So let, right? yeah, let's go down that road. Let's take that journey real quick. So real quick, because um, so, you know, like I said, you guys asked who I am. My name's Eric E-Man Adger. All right, for the record. All right, and that's who you see me as on, on a lot of the production for the Cottonmouth King, Suburban Noise, Soldiers, Dirt Ball, um, ju uh, Judge D, fucking um, Saint, Saint, my nigga Saint, um, fucking, what's the reggae guy? I love him to death. Um, Two Faded. The other one in the beginning, um, that was on um, him. Him, I produce for him, but so awesome, man. Let me tell you. So the beginning started like this for me. I started DJing in, back around '83. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys remember. There's a group called Run DMC. Yeah. They had a song called "It's Like That." That song was released on August the 10th, 1983, and I remember it because around that time, the day. A day later, August 11th, I was turning 13 years old. And I'm going to bring you back to August 11th because that's the day Cottonmouth King dropped the debut album. Wow. So, I then, uh, you know, I was a kid and I just had an interest because the guys that were DJing, my boys, they couldn't keep the beat right. <laughs> they couldn't keep it on beat. Mm -hmm. so they said, hey, if you buy this record, it's like that by Run DMC, you can be part of the group. And I said, oh, shit, I want to be. I went and bought that record, so I can remember around then, that's when I started DJing. Fast forward, I'm going through the shit, I'm learning it, 485, Houdini, all these guys dropping hip-hop wasn't what it was now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't what it was, man. It was all learning. So, back then, we had radio stations, KGFJ, AM 1230, KDAY, 1580KDA, uh, KJLH, uh, Michael Mix and Mortar Supreme Team, Uncle Jam's Army, KACE, Curtis Harmon, all these guys, man. I'm telling you, even in the OC, they was listening to this shit. Trust me. Yeah. Everybody was listening to the same shit. Fast forward a little more. Um, I get a chance to uh, start DJing in the hood, representing whatever. Because I'm from South Central LA, and I'll get back to that later. But at a point, and it bless you. In about 90, Thank you. I, I met this guy who knew Young MC. You guys remember Young okay. MC? 
Yep. Yeah, yeah, that was that was your uh, that that comes up first on your credits. Okay, so Young MC was doing his thing, and he finally won a Grammy in '90. I didn't expect to get with him because I'm from the hood. Young MC was a USC graduate. He was a commercial guy, but I knew somebody from the hood who thought I had the skill, and they said, "Hey, this guy DJ is taking a break." You guys ever heard of Tony G? Yep, I haven't. I have. Tony G? Yep. On the Mixed Master Show? Hell yeah. Julio G? Tony G was Young MC's DJ. So he had to take a break because his wife was about to have a child. I slid in there. Boom. I got the spot. Now I'm on tour with Young MC with Millie Vanilli. You guys remember Millie Vanilli? Yeah. Hey, guess what? You guys are familiar with Pro Tools, right? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. I well, Millie mean. Vanilli had the first Pro Tools, and it was yeah. the real to real. If you guys remember, real to real was this big thing, like a projector that shot films and and, and, and uh, uh movie screens. Yep. They had one. It was one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, and they would bring it around on tour with us as we toured the nation and the country and the world, and they would get on the crew every night about partying too hard, and if they fucked up that Pro Tools machine, they was in trouble. Because these motherfuckers was lip syncing. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah okay? Yeah, they, yeah they, you can't do the show then. Oh, Yo! God. And since I was a DJ, I'd go back every backstage every night to check on my turntables, and I'd hear this rhetoric about, don't y'all fuck up this machine, because if you do, because, yo, Millie Vanilli's, their, 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 their speaking was so broken, I couldn't understand myself, how the fuck do y'all get on stage and sound this way? And then off stage sound like that. <laughs> but I got it. It's on Pro Tools. So whatever. So I'm DJing for Young MC. That's fine. The career goes on. I DJ for Eric B and Rakim on a remix. Shabba Ranks, Monica, King T. I was doing my thing in the industry. So finally, a few years go by, kids. You guys know how that goes. You guys are some fathers. Y'all parents. Y'all know. Yeah. Shit happens. Young MC uh-huh. playing gangster rap hit. I had to back up, man, take care of my kids. Mm-hmm. Now, we did. I did continue to produce for Young MC and do shit with him over the years. So around 96, 97, we got some new dancers in the group, and this is going to bring me to, to, to Cottonmouth Kings. Mm-hmm. This new dancer in the group's name was Cleveland. Shout out to Cleveland. I don't know if you guys ever heard of him. No, I haven't. Cleveland grew up with Brad X. Okay. And Cleveland was a dancer in our group with Young MC. And and so I had all these beats that I was doing over the years from 90 till then. Young MC would never use my beats. He was like, nah, I ain't gonna use your beats. (laughs) You my DJ, but I don't want your beats. So Cleveland would say, man, your beats are hot. So finally around 97, late 97, he said, yo, I got some white homeboys that I grew up with they just got a deal at Capitol Records. Nigga, they need some beats. I think you need to holler at them. I'm like, fuck it. You know, I got beats laying around, and I've been trying to pilfer for, for years. Young MC don't want them. I, I, you know, I got these kids I'm taking care of. Yo, uh-huh. Brad X, Elo, Saint, Saint, and Bobby, Bobby, DJ Bobby B, uh-huh. called me up, and these motherfuckers came down to the hood. Okay, it came down what, to the hood. What, what year was this, uh, E man? This was late '97, early '98, okay. probably around early February, March '98. These motherfuckers came down to the hood, in the goddamn ghetto, to meet me from Cleveland's introduction to hear some fucking beats because they had an album they was working on with Capitol and they're finna drop it. And here's E-Man, crazy. Go, hey, go, not to cut you off, brother. Hey, go into. Go into the first introduction of like them pulling up. Like, what do you see? <laughs> you. <laughs> when they pull up, you know what I'm saying? I'm, listen, I listen. I go back. I was I've, I've been around white folks since I was in elementary. Okay, uh-huh. because I was I said I was highly gifted, and so around the fourth grade, I went to a school called Seventy Fourth Street Elementary. It's in South Central. But get this. Instead of them busing blacks to the white schools, which they started doing, they decided to 
bus whites down to the hood. <laughs> okay. Bus and white is down to 74th Street and Elementary or 74th Street and Van Ness in the hood. Uh-huh. So I'm highly gifted in this program. I'm in a black school, but all my classes got white kids because yeah. all these white kids are getting bust down to, to the hood. It was crazy. All 12, 15 buses, number of white kids getting off the buses. How about that? <laughs> yeah, how about that? But the, I'm getting off buses and I'm going into the class with the white kids in a black school on 74th NS, right over there where Nipsey Hussle rest in peace. Yeah. Okay? So I, I, I go to Portola, junior high in Encino. I graduated from Reseda. So my point was, I've been around white folks all my life. Yeah. Bring them to the hood. We used to ditch Reseda High School and come down to the hood. I'll bring about five or six up with me. Yeah. And tell all my homies in the hood. I'm from Matre Gangster, y'all, by the way. Okay. I'm from Matre Gangster. For sure. And ain't nobody going to dispute that. We'll get into that later. But I'd bring these fools down from, from Encino and Reseda, five or six of my white homies, and had him parked on 84th and Butlong. Nobody fuck with him. Yeah. Nobody. 84, 85, 86. So when Brad and them pulled up on me, I was like, these niggas got balls. <laughs> okay? These fools right. got balls. But I knew they was cool to Cleve. If, if you if Cleve, anybody that's cool with me, if you say these are my peoples, you're going to get that respect from me. White, black, green, yellow, whatever you are. Yeah. But I was just amazed at, hey, they white, and I, and I know what it is. So they come up in the crib, tell me um, such and such, such and such, what's good? We're working on the album. We want to hear some beat. Yeah. These motherfuckers actually was all, were done with the album. Shout out to the AK-47 brothers, by the way. I don't know if y'all know who they are. Yep. yep. Shout out to them because they did the whole fucking album. Shout out to the AK-47 brothers because they had completed the album. X and them just decided to take Cleve's word that they homeboy has some dope beats and to check him out before they finish the album. Mm-hmm. They came to me, I'm playing beats that I've been laying around for years. The fucking beats, I'm going to tell y'all, they bought 10 beats from me. Okay. Five from that them, initial, me- on that, from that first time they met you. Well, well, the first time they met me, they heard, heard some shit and they took about, they wanted about four or five of them. But okay. then, when I went to the studio to, to lay those four or five, now get this. So let me take it back. I'm playing the beats for them in the room, and these motherfuckers is bobbing their head. And I'm like, look at these white boys. <laughs> 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 Listen, I'm not knowing they're remixing songs that they've already recorded with the AK-47 brothers in their head to oh, my beat. Shit. Okay? Whoa. Play on and so high, we're already done. Yep. Play on was done. So high was already done and recorded. I'm playing beats. These motherfuckers is remixing it in their head. So the beat that you hear on the album on Play On and So High, we called them remixes. Because X and M, they, they this is how they hit me though. They hit me with the well, E, we want the songs, but we can't give you uh publishing. And that was standard in the industry. Whenever you were the first time producer on the album. You had to give up your publishing. You feel me? Okay. So I, I, demanded, I said, I'll tell you what. I'll give up the publishing on these songs. And since Play On and So High were already written or produced, you want to use my beats, you still got to put my fucking name on that album and say track by. Because if anybody knew back in the day, when you read the labels on credits and it said track by, you knew who fucking laid the beat. Okay. So they were going to production credit and my publishing. But put my fucking name on there. And you go back on Royal Highness, you're going to see Eric E. Man Adger track by. Mm-hmm. So, so play on and so high were quote unquote remixes, bro. Those were considered remixes, even though they made the album as singles or whatever. They called them remixes because the AK-47 brothers had already laid track for them songs. These niggas went back in the studio and re-laid, relayed their raps. Really? So, so E man, so the so the 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 beats that we're hearing on the the uh, on Royal Highness, that's actually your beats. And... Yes. So, so, but, so, so, what happened to uh, where where like just for history's sake, where can where can the fans go back and hear the AK forty seven version? 
hidden sash, bro. Hidden, hidden sash so high that 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 uh, you heard so high on hidden sash the first one. Yeah. Okay, that's got the, you. That's the AK forty-seven. Yeah. That. Okay. Yep. Stash. Hidden stash got them. They got them on hidden stash. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I follow now. Wait to hear wow. those motherfuckers because when I went in and laid the tracks down, that's when they bought the other five tracks. And at this point, Young MC come he come running into the studio. Okay. Oh, okay. This motherfucker didn't use my beats until I went to the studio with Cottonmouth Kings. All right. Uh -huh. So we in the studio, me, Young MC, all the Cottonmouth Kings, Phil Capel. Shout out to Phil Capel. That's an OG engineer. Okay. And Marvin, young MC, his name is Marvin. He brought his sister. Fine little thing. And shout out to her, uh, Andrea. Well, okay. Brad, and, you know, they love the ladies. We don't matter what color. Okay, right. She went into some beats. One of the beats was discombobulated. They didn't even buy discombobulated until we were in the studio. And they said, play some new shit. And I played discombobulated for them. You know that one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, 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 do. They bought that beat on the spot because she started dancing to it and was like, you did this? And Brad did <laughs> like, We want that beat. Wow. These motherfuckers were buying beats and didn't even have raps to them. That's how hard they was. Okay? So we, we finished out. We laid it out. Now, here's the crazy shit. They dropped the album. I, I, I do the deal with them. I sell them the songs. I, you know, I tell him, all right, take my publishing, give me my writers. Pimp Twist. You guys heard of Pimp Twist? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a classic. So on that album, on that first album I did, Play On, So High, Discombobulated, Pimp Twist, and it's one more. Um, I think it's High Society. High Society. Oh, yep. Yeah. Played all those tracks for him, man, and and it was my pleasure, bro, because I didn't fucking know what they was doing. I didn't. All I knew was these white boys had a deal at Capitol. My mm -hmm. homeboy Cleve hooked me up with them, and they was rad as fuck. Yeah, that's all I knew. I had kids to take care of. I was driving buses at MTA, man. Mm -hmm. I had said fuck the industry. Young MC had played out. With all due respect, we were still touring here and there in spot dates, but I had a family to raise, man. Yep, and he, and here come the Cottonmouth Kings, and if I'm not mistaken, they came out before Eminem. Yep, I yeah. Eminem got big. Yep, yeah. I mean, and, and you had to have probably been from Detroit and like really into underground uh, scene to to have heard of Eminem before Slim Shady EP, and I think that dropped right around end of '99, maybe 2000. But yeah, they were definitely before Eminem, West Coast for sure. So they come out, man, and I don't follow up on them, bro. I get back to driving buses. I'm not paying attention. These motherfuckers go gold. No social media, no no real promotion. These motherfuckers go gold. That's right. And how, what what did they go gold off of? The album. Well, well, here's the thing. Royal Highness, with no real promotion, the album went gold. Now, I do remember them inviting me to a show, and here's a classic. So I'm at the fucking, um, was it the Roxy? Was it the Roxy? And here's where I really love them dudes, man. And I, and I, I should have followed up, but I didn't. I got to see them and say, E, we finna start performing this album. I'm thinking, all right, cool. Let me come out and see what, you know, what's, what happened. We go to the Roxy. Well, Brad and them would perform probably eight of the songs off of that whole entire Royal Highness album for their little tour. They only did like eight of the songs. Okay. They wouldn't do the whole album. They only would do eight of them. Yeah. They did all five of mine. I was going to say, E-Man, the songs that you produced, though, dude, those were my favorite ones, though. Like, especially for me, Play On and So High, dude. All respect, dude, fuck man. Me up. It fucked me up. So we had... We at the Roxy. Yeah. I'm in the crowd. They on stage. I'm really finding a chance to see these dudes just get out. Guess who I'm standing next to? Yeah. And this is what he said. He's standing next to his homeboy, and he goes, "Yo, these motherfuckers is the truth. Who they beats? Guess who said that? Who? Oh Ice no. Who? Ice motherfucking T. Hell yeah. Wow. Y'all know he into that type of shit. 
Yep. Wow. He's at the goddamn show. I'm standing next to him. He don't even know who I am. And I hear this motherfucker telling his homeboy, yo, these motherfuckers is the truth. Listen to their beats. I look back up at the stage and I was cheesing from me to ear for the rest of the night. Okay? Oh, oh. I said, but, but I didn't follow up, man. And so if, if you guys can tell me, so after that, 99 came, I think they dropped the second album. Does anybody know what that second album was in 99? Because I don't. 99 they, just, they, 99, they just came out with uh, the Hidden Stash 1. Um, right. Uh, like, yep, in like mid-99, I want to say, they dropped Hidden Stash 1, which was basically like the songs that were either left off of uh, <clears throat> Royal Highness um, or remixed, like you were saying. Like It, it was kind of a mixture of, of, of both. And then, and then that was it. at the end of '99 when my cousin left. '99, uh, 2000, and Richter came back in, into the group. Thank you, because here's what happened: after that initial hob- album, Royal Highness, and them fuckers blew up. Cause Saint was the hardest at the time. Let's be real about it. Saint was the hardest at the time. Yes, uh, yes, I you agree. One hundred percent harder. Saint was the motherfucking Snoop Dogg of the group. Let's let's keep it one thousand. Yeah, he was the hardest nigga in the group, so I didn't hear back from him in '99. So, you know, we lost touch, and so I didn't know what happened, Jerry. You know, so uh, around early 2000, Brad hit me up. I'm like, "What's up, cuz? What's what's happening? Where y'all been?" I still don't know at this point. The album is go. This is from '98 to 2000. I don't know shit. I'm driving buses trying to pay rent. Yeah. So. Oh, and by the way, after Brad and them did their thing, apparently Young MC followed him because he had a deal at Capitol, and that's when he came and asked me to start producing shit for him. Uh, How about that? Young MC uh, asked me to produce for him. After I dj for him since 1990, I didn't get to <laughs> produce for him until 98, 99 after I produced for the Cottonmouth Kings. How about that? How, how things come full circle, though, right? Damn it. Well, so, hey, so... Hey. So look, 2000, Brad hits me up. Ian, anybody know Ian Montone? They had a lawyer. Yep, I don't. Ian was their lawyer. He actually contacted me. So at this point, I'm living in Inglewood, right by the Inglewood Forum. You guys know where the Inglewood Forum is at? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've been there. over there now. The shit finna be off the hook. Uh-huh. I had a crib over there in the avenues. So they pop up in the avenue. I said, look at these white boys. Here they go. Coming back to the hood. They don't give a fuck. They, don't give a fuck. they back in the hood. They say, E, we need some new songs. But this is how they came at me. And I'm going to be real with y'all because, you know, y'all know some fuck shit that went on eventually with the whole group and everything. Yep. So Brad and them come back to me and they say, we need some new shit. So I'm thinking, well, damn, where, where, where y'all been? What happened? We in my so long. Day. Right. We in my den. I'm playing some shit. I'm playing different couple different songs. I play the beat for King's Blend. Ooh. All vibing in my den. They just like, shaking their head. They bobbing. You know what I'm saying? That's that that's that southern bounce. And people don't even give Cottonmouth credit for that. Or me. Nigga, that was in 2000 we had that southern bounce. Yeah. Okay. Listen to the beat. That's that shit they're doing now. These, these, these trap niggas doing now. That's a yeah. trap beat. Yeah. Hey, trap it, beat. real quick, man. I, I, to, I told Daniel and Jerry, I think already, but uh, man, I was, I was such a fan of that, like that CD. But that specific song, man, that like, um, almost like a, like, uh, it's not like a whistle sound, but like, there's like this distinct high note, like, bing, bing, like real high note, dude. Uh, yeah. One day, like PE class, the homie was listening to, um. I, I just knew it was uh, – I asked him, like, hey, you listen to King's Blend? He's like, yeah. And, like, instantly I met another friend right then and there because, like, that <laughs> beat was so distinct. And he was just bumping out, out of his uh, headphones. But I was like, man, that beat just went so hard, dude. That was, like, seriously a personal favorite of mine off that album, too. Me, too. Yep. That's all, and that song sounds like – that song sounds like it should have had both thugs and harmony on it. Like, that almost. Like, yeah. Hey, dude, that song that – beat, that beat is so hard, dude. Fuck. Mm-hmm. That was me trying to keep X and M in that lane. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. the first album, I'm telling y'all fellas, 
I gave him some shit that was laying around in my room, but it had that hip hop funk on it. And that's what captivated the core of the audience. They were like, look at these white boys, but they got some motherfucking hip hop. Yeah. You could hear yeah. it in the beat. You could hear it in the soul of the beat. You could hear it. So when I missed them in 99 and I didn't know they came back in 2000, I'm like, well, fuck, let me. I knew the sound was changing, so I said, well, let me slide these niggas this. You know what I'm saying? And I was, I'm going to be honest, fellas. I was a little disappointed that I didn't get more play, more on that album, but I'll tell you guys what happened. Okay. When they came back, well, once I talked to their, their lawyer and, and all this and that, and he told me, he said, E, do you know that album went gold? I said, no. Oh. He said, do you know you could have went to Capitol and got a publishing deal for half a million dollars? No. I said, can I still do it? He said, nah, that was two years ago. He, I said, well, shit. They charged me, I charged him $1,000 a track on Royal Highness. If they went gold and I gave him my publishing, I said, not only do I want 2500 a track, I want all my publishing. Okay? Yeah. I said, I want yeah. 2500 a track and all my publishing. And X and, and X and then Zinger and then was like, well, we we not paying that much for tracks. I said, what you gonna pay me? Because mm -hmm. if I gave you for a thousand a track and y'all went gold and nobody followed up on all this the way we should have, I at least need to get paid that on this go round. You feel me? Hey, hey man, I know real real quick. You like if if I would have you know went and did something real successful and you were part of it. I would have instantly hit you back and be like, "Hey, man, that was a great success. You know, what do we like? We this is what happened. Hey, like you, you think they would have touched back with you like right away and at least? Nah, no, no, here, here's what they did when they came back. When they came back and we we were listening to the new tracks for Kings Blend and all that. Here's what X did, and I wondered if I regretted it, but no, I didn't. Here's what they did. Okay, they said, "Look, um." We want to pay you $2,000 a month for unlimited tracks and give up your publishing. And I was like, what? $2,000 a month on the payroll at Suburban Noise Records. No publishing. Just $2,000 a month flat rate and give them unlimited tracks. I was like, hell no. Yeah. So. So that's why I said twenty five hundred per track and all my publishing because I gave y'all my publishing on Royal Highness. Right. Oh yeah. Sounds I was supposed to be my writers, my twenty five percent writers, which I don't see today, which we gonna get into. But uh, I saw it for a minute, but now it's mysteriously stopped. But no, you can't have my publishing no more. And you no, know, two thousand a month. I would yeah. be giving you twenty or thirty tracks a month. Yeah. You understand? And so what happened, they had another producer, which everybody needs to know about, because this producer was who Cottonmouth Kings were eventually raised on and fed on for the rest of their career, Mike Kumagai. That's the that's the name that uh, is commonly brought up, but nobody seems to really know too much about. He took over after me and the AK-47 brothers. Mike Kumagai took over as producer and he gave them that deal. He, I don't even think he was in 2000 a month back then, but this motherfucker undercut me and the AK-47 brothers, okay? Oh, so homie pretty much slid in and was like, hey, I'm willing to like take the, you know, the, the job and, wow. This is what he did, bro. He told me that he sat in the corner of our recording sessions of Royal Highness. I said, I don't even fucking remember you. <laughs> And I was sitting in the corner watching you guys record. And I'm like, word? Now, granted, his background, he's supposed to be from dealing with Sir Mix-a-Lot and them, Saturn A Camp or whatever. But huh. for him to end up in the studio in the corner watching our stations, I didn't remember him. So after that successful first album, I think he had a lot to do with the 99 album, fellas. To be honest, he had a lot to do with that album. And it, it flopped. With all due respect. So when they came back to me in 2000 and, and hit me with that proposition, and, and I knew about this guy because they, they, they went with his whole album. That whole album besides King's Blend was Kuma Guy. 
I, and I and I and I was like, "Yo, man, y'all need a different flavor. This shit here is cool, but nah." I didn't say that to him, but that was my feeling. But but what yeah. I did know was Kuma guy had already enlisted to be their full time in house producer slash engineer slash mixer, get no publishing, and and doing their shit. And that that's the sound that Cottonmouth eventually got, man. And it, it, it pissed me off. I'm gonna be honest, man. Mm-hmm. With all you, Under- understandably dude, so. It pissed me off because if you listen to the music, homie, between Royal Highness. And and everything after that, and then if you listen to King's blend and it mixed in with the shit, you know it just it just it's, it was different. And I love them for having different tastes, but mm-hmm. dude couldn't handle the mantle like me in the AK form, bros. He couldn't handle it, man. <laughs> so what you got was what you got. So when we dropped King's blend, here's a funny story. So they 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 get the album. They still with Capital. They independent. They grinding. They doing it. Brad X calls me. I get my I get my twenty five hundred. I get supposedly my twenty five percent publishing of the whole record for life. Brad calls me up and he goes, "Yo, man, we down here at um, Power and we we took a break with the PD director, a smoke break. We played the whole album for him. They went with Lottery, Capital, and then." Went with some song called Lottery, song called Lottery. Mm-hmm. Brad told me the program director to told him while they were smoking, King's Blade is the one y'all need to drop. This is the song the radio need to be playing. But they said, nah, we going with this. And so from that point forward, never heard back from him again. And, uh, no, I, I'll be honest. What I did was I said, yo, I'll submit tracks to y'all. But any track y'all use, I want my publishing. I want my fucking money. So I just started submitting tracks to them over the years. And here's another interesting story. A lot of the music you guys heard from that third album on, yeah, I would submit 20, 30 tracks at a time, bro, to Brad or Kevin. I'd never get calls back, but I'd listen to the albums and I'd hear similarities of shit that I submitted, but hey. it wasn't what I submitted. You feel E-man. me? E-man, you're E-man, you're not the first to say that. There's, you know, there's recent as of even recently, man. I I never heard too much about this, but this you're uh you're like the second or third case I've seen now. But some but some kid popped up in the comments, some producer, and he he was putting everybody on blast. I forget who, but uh he was saying how he sent uh. I, I forget. I don't want to just throw random names out there, but he sent some one of these former members uh, some beats, and he said that, and he he listed the track that he saw on the album. He said, and he sent proof of his, and uh, there was a bunch of other people lining up and saying, "Yeah, man, like they they easily ripped your beat off completely." So wow. Yo, thank you listen. So I start submitting to him with the understanding if you use some of all my publishing and my fee. And we'll do it like that from now on because they were established at this point. The motherfuckers was rolling. It was popping. Wow. It was making yeah. money. The whole, yeah. the whole night it was making money. I don't. I just want mine. So I'm submitting beats, but I'm not getting calls back for 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 albums. And I'm listening to this shit. And God bless Mike Kuma guy, man. You know what I'm saying? But he took him into a a, a I call it trip hop direction. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm telling you, the core Cottonmouth King fans love that hip-hop shit. They yep. fucking love that hip-hop shit. Even though so high, I had that rock guitar shit going. Okay? Remember that mm-hmm. on so high? Yeah. So put guitar shit in there. And this would be before I met him. I made that fucking track, so I guess it was meant to be. Yeah. But I would have kept them going in that direction with the whole rock thing, but keeping that funky beat on there because the shit guy was doing with him with that rock shit it was just generic bro it was yeah. generic man and, and god bless their fans for sticking with them and staying with them but i would listen to the shit and go damn i i submitted a beat that sound almost like that and wow. then it got to the point the motherfucker just started taking my shit wow straight that doesn't, that doesn't my surprise shit. And, and God bless P. Nice. P. Nice was an engineer up there. He would call me and go, E, B. 
these dudes just use this many tracks. You guys hip to the Sub Noise Soldiers? Yeah. Yep. Well, when they first debuted, go back to the first album with that cold ass skeleton on the front of the album cover. Yeah. Uh-huh. Four of them songs is mine. Wow. Uh, uh, we Bad featuring D Ball, Dirt Ball. Keep a lookout. Yeah. Uh, dust to dust and wow. pip And two of them songs got the dude on there who they eventually had to scrap because he got arrested for some uh, uh, child molestation shit. I liked him though; he was hard. Wow, who's that? Talk about just talk about the dude. He, yeah. That come. motherfucker. He rapped on two of them four songs that I produced on that album, man. Wow. Uh, my soldiers and I had to get a call from the engineer. Because they have took the songs. They fucking recorded it without telling me. I had to come in and sit down with Kevin Zinger and tell him, nigga, break bread and give me my publishing. I thought yeah. that's what the contracts I signed. Wow. Then they dropped another album, Some of the Soldiers. I did a song called um, um, Pull a Pin. Yep. Okay. Fucking Kuma guy put his name on it. I had to tell him that's my song. <laughs> so we in the office, we get Kuma guy on the phone, me and Kevin Zinger. I'm in Kevin Zinger's office banging on him. Like, nigga, what my shit? Yeah. He gets he gets Kuma guy on the phone. He say, Hey man, did you do this beat? Turn that down. Kuma guy say, uh, I don't know. People submit beats all the time. So I know they was taking other people's shit as well. Yeah. And I said, yeah. What? He said, I don't know. People submit beats all the time. I said, and you put your fucking name on my beat, motherfucker? That nigga Kevin started writing me a check immediately. And I started writing the, signing the contract, which I thought was my publishing for that song. Wow. Okay? I, listen, man. I ain't trying to shit on nobody. But I'm telling you the behind-the-scenes shit that went on, man. Hell yeah. And, and so the Kuma guy, like I said, man... He was an in-house producer, and he would take everybody's fucking submissions and try to emulate them to make an album for Come Off Kings, and they was cheating the fucking fans, bro. Yeah. They were cheating the fucking fans. And you ultimately understand? cheating themselves, too. Cheating them, you know, and, and stealing their shits. And, 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 and God bless my nigga Saint, because in about 2006, I was pretty much just submitting beats for the hell of it. And 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 Pat P Nice called me up. E, you gotta come in and lay these beats down. Why? Saint doing a solo album. What? Yeah, he doing a solo album and he doing eleven of your tracks. I think it was fourteen, maybe. <laughs> it's called United States Amputees. Yeah. He fucked their heads up. He fucked everybody up at the label when he said, "I'm using E Man beats." Fuck me up. <laughs> He brought me back into the fold because for years they was cloning my shit and cloning everybody other other producers' shit who was being submitted. <laughs> Saint was like, no, I want these fucking beats and I don't want them off the CD. Because let me tell y'all, they would take beats right off the CD and fucking record them. No mix down, no nothing. Take them right off the CD, lay vocals and put the shit out. Yeah, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, losing, you're losing quality. Lay, hey, they did the fucking the Sub Noise Soldiers. The first Sub Noise Soldiers album that I'm telling you I did, Dust to Dust, keep a lookout. Those were off of a fucking CD, bro. They didn't even call me in to record them. Oh, fuck. Them songs are, all of the drops and everything you hear in them songs is from what I submitted. But Say told them, I want this nigga songs, have him come in. I went into the studio and laid them down track for track. That's why his shit sounds so good with Big Hoss in them. That album is hard, too. That, those beats are hard. So, so years went by, man, and then next thing you know, I just wasn't hearing from the dudes, but it was a lot of shit going on, man, and, and then Saint left them. When Saint left them, I really wasn't even tripping anyway. Okay? Yeah. I wasn't tripping when Saint left because I wish Saint was on fucking King's Blend, which would never happen. I wish Saint was on King's Blend. What? Man. All due respect to Johnny Richter. I wish Saint was on King's Blend. Yeah. Stop it. Hell yeah. The last song I did, Time Off Kings, was a song called Lifestyles. 
It's on an album with a with a bra with a statue. Fired up. Yep. Fired up. I did a song called Lifestyles and that's the last song I did for the Come Off Kings. Because after that, fucking Kuma guy would just just intent on producing all they shit and taking everybody's submissions and trying to recreate it for himself. Wow. It's fun. Funny you mentioned that album. Actually, that album had that song uh, "Bad Habits," and uh, yeah. they actually stole my cousin's song. Bad, that, that was my cousin's song, uh, "Bad Habits." Oh, oh that, I that, love that song. That song bad was habits, "Bad Habits." That song was my cousin uh, uh, Saint and Haas's uh, song, bro. And uh, when uh, when I was living with my cousin Saint, uh, Loke lived around the corner. Loke came over and invited us over for a little barbecue, fucking beer, whatever. And, and my cousin Saint was playing him that song, and he was like, "Yeah, check it out, dude. I want to get you on this song." So, so looks like, "Oh, it's dope. Bring it over when, when we're barbecuing." So we we probably played that song about twenty fucking times at this barbecue, sitting in Loke's backyard. About two years later, bro, or maybe a year later, that song is on that album. Them doing it without his permission. I, as soon as I heard the album, I called him up. I said, "Hey, did you give them this song?" He's like, "What are you talking about? Played it for him." He's like, what the fuck? So he called up Zinger. He called up X. It was a it was a big ordeal, bro. And he was already yeah. back with Sub Noise at that time. So yeah. he didn't want to cause like a bunch of waves because he's already back with Sub Noise. You know, they already kind of squashed their beef. And and uh, yeah, it was just I call, I was I was all over every fucking fuck. chat room talking shit, dude. It was fucking it was it was pretty shitty, dude. Damn. You guys hear the Tsunami Brothers? Yep. The what? The Tsunami Brothers. Yep. Bobby B and D Loke. Dude, with all due respect to Bobby B, they, these niggas took my songs back then. I got two songs on the Tsunami Brothers album that I had to go back and get compensated for, etc. Because Bobby B took them. <laughs> he took them. They've been they've been doing that shit, and, and Bobby Bobby was more humble than Kuma guy about it. Because Bobby really didn't know. He was like, shit, I didn't know. I just heard dope beats. I got two beats on a Tsunami Brothers album. Two. Wow. <clears throat> 99. 99, bro. I can't think of the songs right now, but uh, one of them go, do don't do do don't do 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 Hey, it's crazy, man. Hey, yeah, hey. You, you know what? They, they would always uh, open the shows. Like when you'd be walking into the show, you, you don't, the Tsunami Brothers beats would be the first ones you'd always hear. So I'm into, maybe it was cut years. I tell you what, if you go back and just look at a lot of the production on Sub Noise Soldiers, Come Off Kings, and shit like that, if you see my name, when you see Eric E Man with two N's on the E Man or three N's, that's how you know. Kevin Zinger got me for my publishing. I'm, I'm going to have to go get him, cuz. Yeah. I, I was I was giving him the benefit of the doubts because my name was on these records, but I'm not realizing this nigga registered these songs in this name. I'm Eric E-Man Adger with one N. This nigga was putting my name Eric E-Man with two N's or Eric E-Man with three N's. Go look on the, go look on the albums. Wow. Hey, look on Space USA. Try and I was sneaking, but, but, but now I don't get shit. Fuck. We're going to get into the bad X, the whole explosion of Kamal Kings later. We're going to get into that because X. More like implosion. Yeah. All of that. Because let me tell you something. Now, my individual relationships with every member, A1. Solid. I'll kill for any one of them. Don't get it twisted. Any one of them. I'll fucking kill for them. They family. Okay. But Kevin? That's a different story. And you know what? It's, it, I mean, Bobby B. He's he's real vocal on uh, on the gram and all that. About it. He's he is not let uh, you know whatever happened go by either. He's he still holds a lot of resent against uh, Kevin Zinger. So, well, you know. well, I'm missing Kevin Zinger, but to peep this. Brad X is equally responsible because he was fifty percent owner. Yeah. And here's the thing. I'm, I, I, I wish. I want to do some segments with y'all because I don't want to give it all up now, but yeah. I'm going to just tell y'all Brad was responsible as well, but he slipped. Yeah. He was slipping. Okay? Absolutely. And and for the other members, I understand them being mad at Brad because, motherfucker, you were supposed to have our back. You were supposed to have our best interests. Right. No matter what Kevin did, no matter how shifty Kevin was as a manager, 
You part owner, nigga. You part rec- rapper. You are group. And, and I think yeah. we've talked about this before. Like, that kind of is a manager's deal is to get as much, like, squeeze as much juice from the orange as you can, you know? I mean, that's that kind of is his job. But, you know, you can't you but can't. Brad as part owner. Process. Brad as yeah. part owner was supposed to keep his eyes on the prize because I'm going to tell y'all this. Cuz was able to sign Brad's name off of everything and take control. And once he did that, they were screwed. Okay? This nigga Kevin went into the bank as the manager because, you know, groups will give the manager permission to sign off on shit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Brad went in there and signed off on everything and said, I got control. <laughs> so Brad was fucked. So guess who else is fucked? D-Lo, everybody. Richter, everybody. And they looking at Brad, they're like, nigga, fuck him. You part owner. Fuck him as a manager. He's a manager. He should only be getting 15%. Y'all doing business on y'all side. Nigga, you supposed to handle that. He's our manager. He your business partner. How he take control of everything, and now you don't got no answers for us, Brad. You feel me? Yeah. So then Brad went and started making side deals. And that's, I'm gonna tell y'all some other. That's another story. I ain't gonna go into that. But I, listen, man. <laughs> is is I this love, around like UFM time? Like when we saw UFM? Right? Yeah, I skipped ahead. I skipped ahead, but okay. You know, you know, man. Just and DGAF, man. I had shit ready for DGAF. I had shit ready for Chucky Chuck. I had beats ready for him. Man, I was gonna start that way if I God bless it, they would let me. But yeah, they was on the other shit. They was on, you know, some other shit, man. Just other shit, bro. Other shit. You know, oh, yeah. and I'm not talking about the rappers. I'm talking about whoever was trying to run this shit. Behind the rappers the politics. Down. The rappers was down to get on the hottest beats. Elo, yeah. Victor, Saint them. They, they they just wanted the music. It was the shit going on behind the scenes. You feel me? Yeah, yeah the politics. And you, let's use this guy because we don't have to pay him. Let's use this guy. You know, so we don't have to pay him. That shit, man. Fucking crazy. So, I just, I just, I just, I love that the legacy gonna live ever. Because one thing about Kamov King legacy, it's gonna live regardless of the smut. Yeah. And the shit that has happened. Yeah. Lately, but that legacy gonna live on. And I'm proud to be a part of that, man. And I didn't even know how central I would be in it as a, a brother from South Central LA, man. Y'all need to know. That kind of clean connection came from South Central, baby. They they went to South Central to get that shit popping. And I want y'all to know that. All right? Yeah. It's in the history them, books. Them brothers went to South Central, baby. And and, if, and and I'm telling you, I just wonder that a lot of fans question what happened to the sound or did they just go with it? What they did, but a lot of them wonder, man, because... It's like night and day. Royal Highness and the rest of that shit is like night and day. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. You know night what? And day. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Jerry. All the old school fans, dude, uh, I hear it a lot because of who my cousin is, dude. Like, I, I hear it a lot. Hey, some people that didn't even know who my cousin cousin is, I hear them. Dude, Royal Highness, the early days were the dopest shit, dude. Like, their beats were dope. The rafts were dope. Everything, dude. So, it's like they, they, they completely lost that sound and everything no don't get me wrong they're they're shit they have some dope shit along the way they but do. They it, do. it, it is different it's way different because i loved a lot of you know with the rock and the, and the drums rolling crazy i loved it but i just mm-hmm. wish it would have kept blend because the first album bump i wouldn't have made no shit like that but it was banging yeah what bump and they had a few more on there it was a perfect fucking Blend. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. That's why I said always shout out to AK-47 Brothers. Always. Always. Fuck Our blend was crazy. I understand how I go, but the business they chose to go was get a producer who's going to steal everybody else's shit and try to make it sound like shit. And that wasn't cool, man. It sounds like d running with that uh, mo even to this day with the fans. What? Rubbed well, off. Yeah, with uh, with with the the Kingdom Come, SCD. Yeah. The, the most recent re- most recent release. Um, 
with the pre-orders, people were, I, I, I mean, I got mine eventually. I'm one of the few what that actually got there's that? the mail. What, what happened? What the fuck happened with all of that? Um, may, maybe Daniel can explain a little bit better, or Jerry, but and how uh, was as, far as, I, as far as able, I know. Able to commence, ahead. how was the group able to commence without Brad and all that? What, what the fuck, how, how did all this shit go? Because I'm just watching from the sidelines at this point. What happened? Well, uh, I think I talked about it a little bit um, on the last episode was, so everybody was kind of doing their own thing, solo shit. You know, all, all, the band basically broke up uh, they, without telling their fans they broke up. But so my cousin was working on a solo album. He hit up Loke uh, to get on his solo album. Loke was like, all right, cool. So he went up there. They did a couple songs. They're dope. Uh, and then and Loke, I think Loke just kind of saw that, you know, his solo shit wasn't doing anything, but that vibe that he had with my cousin, like the music was just, <clears throat> you know. So he was like, "Hey, let's 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 bring back Cottonmouth Kings." So they brought they they basically brought the group back, man. But um, without without you know Bobby B or uh, when? when without X, any of that when? shit, but, like two years when? ago, about it was like early uh, last year, four twenty uh, two thousand eighteen was uh, Kingdom Come release. Okay. Side Side note, I sent him some beats, y'all, but I bullshitted him. We finna get back together. I, I sent him some beats when they was first talking about getting back, just for fans, because I, I only believe it's right that we do this shit over again. Yeah. I'm finna, I'm finna dig in, y'all, and I'm finna send them some fucking crazy shit, and I hope Saint and D-Lo do it, man. Side note, I was, I was I sent him some beats, but I ain't gonna lie, I sent him some old bullshit. Okay. So, no, I, I was going to be a part of the kingdom come, but I'm going to be on some future shit. Side note. Good. Hey, that's great to hear. Let, yeah, I hope it goes all the way 100% back to the roots. Me too. I just want the fans to, to hear what, what got them started in the, in the first place. That's all. And the new fans, I want them to experience this is it. Because let me tell you something, man. That shit that they did in the beginning was pure hip hop. Yeah. yeah, everything else after that was just yeah. commercial and, and I guess to, to sell the brand. But yeah, that's the general consensus. Everybody likes the earliest stuff the best. And I thought I helped them with that King's Blend. I swear I thought I was going to bring them back, but they didn't pump it, man. I, I felt they would have pumped King's Blend. You know, they they kind of did though. E man, I don't know if you ever saw their. Uh, I think it's the. Uh, uh, Endless Highway DVD that they did. They made like a little music video to it. When oh, they, yeah. they went over, they went over to Amsterdam and they used your that song as like a, their little music video for it. I, I, I think I saw that, but that that that's that's just to, to go to the testament of their power from the underground because that was just underground push. That was word of mouth. Yeah, yeah. They didn't get that, the push like they got on that song called Lottery. You, maybe you guys like that song. It's whatever, but. It was cool. I saw what happened in King's Blend. No. Hell no. <laughs> King, King's Blend is probably cool. my favorite on there. I mean, I, I, it, it's, it, King's Blend and Lottery are the first two that come to my mind when, uh, when I but think they of that one. They played Lottery. I think lottery. Crucial was on there. I like Crucial. The album was decent. The album was decent. But yeah. I swear to you, they going down in history for King's Blend. They the going down. Their whole sound changed on uh, High Society album. Because you, yeah. you, you hear it, you hear it's it's completely different. Even like peace, not greed, all all that stuff, dude. The whole sound was different. And I think the album wasn't bad at all. I I, I do think it was it was good, but it was a different sound completely. It wasn't that like fucking like uh, you know for being like you said for being white, Royal Highness was like some G shit. It was fucking dope, like some gangster ass fucking beats, dude. Like yeah. And then, it, and yeah, it had the punk shit and the reggae shit, but like, dude, it was dope as fuck, man. Like, um, it had it had a certain vibe to it where where uh, um, high society went more. I guess it has punk. South Central. I'm telling you, them boys came to South Central, and they got to be. That's why I appreciate y'all letting me get on record. It's got to be noted. Them niggas came to South Central, homie. Mm -hmm. South oh, Central okay. type of album. Okay, yeah, reflected in the sound. And so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. so on uh, uh, Royal on uh, uh, King's Glen, I I tried to share them a certain way, but that album, 
let's just just know this. I submitted a lot of tracks, and and Cuz tried to to emulate them. That's what y'all hearing when y'all hear the change in the sound of that album. He took a lot of my shit and tried to redo it. That sucks, man. That's what that's what you hear. That's what you're hearing on that album. Him trying to what his, you know with the boom. But that, what's, what's that guy up to nowadays? Who? Come, Come on, Kuma or whatever. He probably still he, he probably still he, shit, he was tired ex and, and, and zinger. He, nigga was contract for life with him, from what I understand. Shit. Nigga contract for life. Oh, they cut him that they probably just cut him loose and realized. You know, he couldn't fuel him no more. You know, I mean, shit. He had one arm. Dude, let me tell you something. He's, he, Mike Kuma guy is a small Asian guy. He, and okay. one of his arms is disabled. So I would have beat his ass a long time ago for what he was doing. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't, have, you don't get a win for fucking with somebody that, that you can't. No. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He, he, so I, I wish him the best. God bless him. He, yeah. he definitely is, a, is going to be a major. Part of the Kaimov King legacy forever. He's he's major in the legacy. Uh -huh. I'm just that's a small that. part, but that small part is what really set the shit off. Yeah, that's what on, on, on Kingdom Come. Uh, uh, to kind of go back to that a little bit too. Uh, funny, we're talking about ripping off and shit. Well, the 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 guy who produced that album, um, uh, Coralie, as Coralie, I always forget to say his name right. Uh, he he uh he made all the beats and he actually wrote all Loke's raps and he didn't get paid either so uh you see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's kind of fucked up. I, I don't know so what they're gonna do. And that's fucked up because they were still with Capital in ninety nine, so the push should have been there. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. They came, back, they came back in two thousand. And the motherfuckers reclaimed it with cut with King's Blend and, and the lottery and, and crucial and all them. So and I don't know what the fuck happened. I, I here I just kept submitting beats for years. I wasn't hearing from them, but I would hear album. Let me tell y'all something. I still have to go back to this day and listen to shit that they dropped just yeah. to see if it's my beat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm serious. I still I have to continue to listen to this day to hear if something is is mine's. That's yeah. fucked up. They even did some shit with uh, Brother J from H Clan that I got credit for that I don't even know I produced. <laughs> I feel for them brothers, man, because that group should have never went the road it went. And shout out to Free Saint Dog, by the way, too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Free Saint yeah. Dog. Because I don't care what, what the fuck happened, everybody know. Cuz was essential in the beginning of Kaimau King. I know they yes. say, well, Rich was original, but when that debut album dropped, the debut album is is, is what makes him official. It was. And you know, on the day... Sorry. No. And uh, on the debut album, I was just listening to Frontline the other day. Uh, St. Dog's got a line in there. He says, I'm St. Dog. I'm the leader of the group. Yeah, right. He was. He was. Right. Goddamn right. And let me tell you why I never, I can't never let it go. That album was dropped on my birthday, bro. Oh, was it August 11th when you said? 1988, August 11th. 1998. Fuck yeah. And I didn't even fuck, I didn't even hear from them when they dropped the album. We, we did those songs months earlier. So when they dropped yeah. it, I, I didn't know. I was, I was probably driving down Western Boulevard, picking people up on the bus. <laughs> wow. Okay. And they out making history, finna make fucking history. Wow. Yeah. Damn. So, you know, I just, I just really wish that I could have contributed more to him, man. But it was business. It was business for me, man. And you know, they was on some other business. It, you know? I was gonna say it, it sounds like it was business for them too. You know, just to uh, get that in-house guy at two thousand a month, just putting out some watered down bullshit. They're happy with whatever, I guess. Would you guys do that? Would you Would you give up two thousand a month? I don't give a fuck if it's a TV show, anything. Give up your no. talent for two thousand a month. Submit your uh, idea. Submit your talent. It's unlimited per month. No, me me personally, I'm I'm about quality over quantity with anything. So, yeah, me too. And um, I'd, I'd rather ha I'd rather have less of tracks, but 
pick out the bangers and, and like and, and go with go with who you who you instinctively you know your your gut tells you to go with. Time Time effort. Worse. effort is money, dude. You know what I mean? You got to pay for that shit. You can't. Once you find the recipe, stick with it for a bit. Because back in the 2000s, you could still sell a million. You could still tell two million records. 2003, even when they were dropping in 3, 04, 05, 06, they could have still been selling millions of records. They, they had great distribution. They were in every Best Buy. They were in the uh, like local CD and record stores. They're, they were around for sure. Yeah. But the fans, the fans let them know. And what's crazy and why they'll go down in history is because they had a fucking cult following. The cult yeah. said, nah, fuck that. We like the original shit they dropped. And we're going to stick with them. And, and sub- subsequently, like we were waiting for that original sound on every next come project. Back. We just never got to it. Come back. Yep. To come back. Y'all was waiting for your boy. Y'all was waiting yep. for your boy. Y'all was waiting <laughs> for your boy. No. We didn't and know. don't don't get me wrong, E Man is down with any other producer, but yo, I once I caught I caught wind to what we had after King's Blend, mm-hmm. and I'm submitting shit and not hearing back from them so that we can get in the studio and finish up. And I'm hearing them drop albums and shit sound like mine, but totally like watered down. I was shaking my head like, wow, wow. But, yeah, you know, it was a business for them because hey, they 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 had the SRH, you know, they had a lot of shit going, so they was able to maneuver around the music, and that's what kept them popping. They was maneuver to, uh, to the merch, the merch, the merch. They sold a lifestyle. That part, dude. How many times do you do I? I'm a brother, a nigga, and I drive down the fucking highway. You know how many SRH mushrooms I see on bumpers? Thank huh? you. Still to what? this day, cover covering the, the, the Ford logo, right? Do you know how many I see? Uh, yeah, and it, it warns my fucking heart. It warns me because I'm connected to it. Mm-hmm. It fucking warns me, and I be saying, you know what? I'm so glad to know that. No matter what, I'm connected to people who don't look nothing like me. You laid that foundation of a like seriously. I was hey, we were. I was telling Jerry the other day about how like, how, like literally they they did they changed the world because, I mean I'm sure E man you you recognize around that time like how much uh, just the culture shifted, uh, like how how everybody was like uh, you know rocking like some dickies some SRH clothes, uh, ro- lift the lifted trucks the dirt bikes it all went hand in hand skateboard extreme sports like all that went so much hand in hand. And it was fueled by the music of Suburban Noise Records and uh, the, the beats that you provided. Let me tell, let me tell you how legendary this shit, this shit is. So I got a son, and, and you guys asked me to, to give you guys uh, a hint into what I've been doing since then. And, uh, yeah. But we just, I, we'll get to that later, because I want to come back. We got to talk another day, man. I got a shit yeah. talk. But yo, let me tell you just how, how big the shit is. You guys hit to the Delamo Mall in Torrance? Yeah, I'm sorry, the where? The the, the Delamo Mall in Torrance? No, I haven't been there before. Yeah. Somebody, Jerry, know, it's a big old mall in Torrance, California, Delamo okay. Mall. Yep. So my son, Lil GQ, is up there with my nephew and a bunch of their little homies at the mall in the parking lot. Uh huh. They hear and see. A big ass suburban, bunch of white boys with some white white hoes, bumping. We bad, we bad, nothing better than we, nothing bad, but my son told the, the homies, that's my dad music. Uh, oh they, shit! They make their way over there. The white boys are smoking, getting blowed. They looking at these niggas like, oh, what they want? They like, hey, what y'all know about this? They looking at the niggas like, what y'all know about this? My yeah. son tells me my dad did that beat. Dude. I know. They couldn't fucking believe it. They they, wow. they all started smoking together, drinking together. It brought all of them together, these blacks and whites. That's what music does. This guy, this little dude, five foot four, is telling them my dad did that beat and was able to give them enough information. They the white folks was like, shit. 
Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, I- I, I I told you that's how I met that one dude in the PE class. I'm like, hey, you listen to Cottonmouth Kings? Like I just I heard that beat through his headphones. I'm like, dude, I know that. I know that beat that you're listening to. That's a uh, that's King's Blend. One's my heart, man. One's my fucking heart, dude. Yeah. So good shit. You know, I just want the fans to know, man, that they was they was real. They was for real. I don't know what happened. I guess the business took over, but them dudes was was they was they was with it, man. They wanted they wanted it, man. They was hungry. They was hungry in the beginning. Saint, all of them. Yeah. I need to know what happened with Saint. How between ninety eight ninety nine, but I didn't care because you can't deny talent. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, you know, coincidentally with uh, the release of High Society, we lost not only a production uh, from you. But also uh, Saint too. He that was he wasn't on there. So, yeah, it definitely took a different direction. And Sonic I wasn't mad at it. lyrically. I wasn't mad at it because guess what? When they went with that shit where the beats and the drums go crazy and real fast and the crowd go wild, guess what? Think that's a part of a show. You yeah. need them kind of songs. Yeah, that's just some energy stuff. That shit you need it, but but. You still should always be able to bring them back to that bounce where the because listen, white, black, yellow, green, motherfucker know how to bounce if the right. beat right. You know how to bounce. Right. Know how to you, bounce. You know, you know good good music when you hear it. So, and they basically let them know that. Listen, here's the thing about white people and hip hop. They don't follow trend. White people know what's good and what's not. Okay. They know what's good. Yeah, yeah. You can't perpetrate on white people. The blacks, we know better. But you can't perpetrate on white people either. Yeah. You, can't, you can't serve them up some shit and call it hip-hop. They know better. Right. Fuck yeah. They know better. So, as the years went on, it was what it was. And then y'all saw the breakup. Yeah. You know? God bless Sounds like them, it man. was inevitable. It was because of the business side of it, but exactly, but, just trying to cut costs on every single end, nonstop. Yeah, starting from the beginning. Yeah, it, it was an impressive piece to uh, uh, Pacalite, so. man, because he was a big sure. part of the show. That, that, yeah, they had a, you know, and they had a shout show out uh, Giant Steve for holding the legacy of Poc- Apocalypse alive. I guess he's uh, Daniel knows a little bit more what he's up to. Uh huh. Yeah, he's running the Team Giant thing. Hashtag Team Giant. That's what's uh, up. Where, where is he at? I want to find him, Dad. Where is he at? I He's got Instagram. Him. I believe he runs the Pakalika Tribute Facebook page. I am Giant Steve. Is it, I, I think okay. he goes by on, on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Because okay. Pac was my dude, man. That day, hey, let me tell you something. Him going out there dancing to the shit, it turned it all up. Hey, Eman. Yeah, I, I'm. I always try. I try to express this every show, like. A big part of what drew me to a Cottonmouth King show was knowing about that 20, 25 minute segment where Pac was just killing it on stage, you know, popping and locking. Like, that was so sick. That was such an important part of that show and to their legacy. With the mask? Yeah. And when they opened the show, he was like, yeah, he was like bumping. He had like the, uh, the vape going and everything. It was so sick. Come on, man. Come on, man. And so, you know, and, and even his demise, how he passed away, it was all bullshit and controversial and just shit just shouldn't have went however it went, man. I was I was on the sidelines at that point, but yeah. the way that group started out, man, fucking they like the rest of these t- the Temptations and the Jacksons and them. Yeah. People say, oh, don't compare them to them. Well, underground. Yeah. Okay? There was a group yeah. that fell apart. Well, E-Man, we, we were even hearing about, like, resentment uh, amongst the members uh, for, like, certain members going to Pox Memorial and stuff. Like, it's fucked up. It was. Hey, y'all remember this girl? Remember the little black chick that Pac was with? No, I, I don't, actually. I wasn't yeah. really following at the time. Jerry, I see you shaking your head. Yeah. Remember that black chick? Yeah. That he had tattooed on his arm? Yeah. Yo, she came to my house and, and recorded some shit with me later and gave me some stories, some inside shit on some more shit. How about that? Wow. Yeah, that black chick that's tattooed on his arm. Mm-hmm. She came to my house and was telling me how she was mad at a lot of shit that went on. She didn't like how they was treating him. And and she told me a lot about his last days. I'll share later. 
Hey man, that shit shouldn't went like that, man. No. Tragic shit. Apparently they make they, they need to make a fucking movie about them, but I bet they can't all get together and and and, and tell it right. It have to, that's, you know what I'm saying? It have to be from everybody else. That's what I said. Somebody could have yeah. written like a, a book, like a, like a book, an autobiography by this point, and we would have bought it. Straight out of Compton was dope as fuck. Yeah. Dude, but guess what? I bet you, if you did this story right about them, I bet it hit. Hey man, even did it as like, part. even did it as like an underground, like independent kind of film kind of thing, you know. And even just kind of did it, kept it like SoCal around here, and just saw how it did. Yeah. Man, the story would be crazy because each and every one of them, hey man. So, so Brad, Brad is a guy I stay in touch with a lot. Right? Really. All the way, my dude. Listen, I'm going to tell you guys stories in the next episode. Okay. I stayed in touch with him a lot. I never stopped staying in touch with Brad. You know why? Because I always was checking on my royalties. I was about my royalties, and he did them right. Yeah. He did get my royalties right. So this is when I found out Kevin took control. I'd always go to X when I had a problem with my checks. Whenever I had a problem, I'd go to X. He'd handle it. So I never... I, I've talked to X as recently as October 2018. I'll tell y'all off, off record what I've heard lately, but I don't know. I, I, I know I know. in the end, he pissed d Logan them off. Mm-hmm. Um, um, just real quick... I know, I know, at Uf, I know at UFM, he got money. At UFM, he got money. I don't know if he shared it, though. A girl that uh, privately messaged me one time, she was talking about how um, he was involved in, uh, like, recently, like, managing some kind of punk band or something. So I guess he's still dabbling a little bit with the music, I guess. I need to hear from him, y'all, because I'm going to be real. I got some court shit coming up. Not criminal, but civil. I need to get a hold of the motherfucker. I've called his attorneys. Listen, he got some money at UFM, and I thought d Lope and the rest of the gang was all coming along. I, from what I understood, he got some money from Red. Some, no, 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 maybe, maybe Kevin got that money. He got some fucking money from somewhere to do a distribution deal with Universal. Universal gave him the bread. I thought he gave these niggas money. Maybe he didn't. d Lope and them. Didn't give him no money. He, but here's the thing. He said he had to use money to fight Kevin. Okay, mm-hmm. Kevin, was, Kevin was drained in, in, in um litigation. Mm-hmm. Instead of Kevin just forking over everybody's rights and everybody's publishing, Kevin was draining X in litigation, and whatever attorneys X had, they was charging him. And I kept saying, X, why you keep paying them? Why do you keep paying attorneys to keep going back to meetings with Kevin about your shit? So he kept saying he was paying all his money out. So he must have took the money from UFM that should have been given to d and everybody else and was using it for his legal fees. Yeah, he, you know, he was probably just looking short sight like, you know, I just got to put, put a Band-Aid on this, handle this, and then, you know, maybe we'll get some royalties coming in and I'll pay the guys back. Maybe he was done with good intentions, but... Combined with his, his alleged pill habit or addiction. What? Say what? I'm going to talk offline about that one. Yeah. Uh, we talked about it in the last episode, but um, yeah, I, y- guess he's, I guess talk he about. had a... Hey, what you talking hey, about? Jerry, he, real quick, Hold on. you want to elaborate? Uh, e- E-Man wasn't even aware that X was on a, a pill addiction. Oh, yeah, yeah. He just had, he just had an opiate addiction. <laughs> he well, just I, had an opiate addiction. <laughs> I, 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 well, like, well, I heard. All right, so it's it's a big deal, dude. I, I just think like with him, it was like <clears throat> I, I kind of think being in that industry, uh, being a rock star, and being as big it comes as he with is, the game. Do like uh, an, an opiate, an pill addiction. It's a big it's a big deal no matter what. But it's a trip for me. I, I trip yeah. out. Because, I trip out because like, dude, I, I know a lot of these big artists and shit they get in like heroin and shit you know what i'm saying and it starts with opiates so i always kind of tripped out like to me i still trip out that he never went that far with it yeah well here's the thing 
I was told it was it started from him getting stabbed in the neck. Did he get stabbed in the neck, y'all? Yeah. I saw it on TV. No, 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 no. It was a cyst that he he lied and said he got stabbed. Oh. He had to go to the hospital and get a cyst removed. I mean, he That's lied and what? said it was a cyst. Because I was told whatever whatever resulted from that. That's when he started taking pills. And and I do know, I'm gonna be real, y'all. I do know about, you know, you know what I'm saying? But 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 from what my understanding, it was just for rock and roll, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. The the the, the crew, the crew you wanted them, the bitches wanted them. So that that was my understanding. So and I kind of, you know, he, he was, I, he I knew was he was club popping. promoting. I knew he was popping them. And it, well, it was it was it was he was a club promoter. I mean, it's it's a, like, yeah, you know, like Jerry said. Like, I'm that's surprised the that's the only lane he went down. Because you know, but early on, X did pump, uh, uh, like straight edge lifestyle. So the only that's the only reason, like, I'm surprised that he he had an opiate addiction because he used to promote being straight edge. But then, what? Um, what? Yeah, but then like you know, obviously like okay, like you know, everybody we all have our we all battle our demons. But uh, then later on, he was uh. On like when he did that B real episode, he wasn't even inhaling on the joint. He, like he, he, everybody was saying how he ex didn't smoke yo, weed and all that. Like, yo, the black girl I was telling y'all about uh, that Pac was dating. Yeah, that, she told me a story. She was this is the things I was saying she was bitching about. She was saying how uh, these motherfuckers don't even smoke weed. She's like, Brad, <laughs> she was like, I smoke weed and blow big. He don't even fucking smoke. And I'm like, huh? This is like 2014, 13. She's like, he don't even fucking smoke. Now, granted, I, I was always around X. Now, I saw him hit a joint a couple of times, but I, I was blown away that he don't smoke. Like, nah, he don't blow? I was like, what? Like, nah, he don't even touch it. And you know what? Hey, if 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 you choose to to partake or not, that's that's cool. But don't front on it in the music and 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 talk about it. Like, there's plenty of other shit to talk about. You don't have to talk about you smoking like you was. I don't know. That's just my take on it. I made him smoke well, that, one. That, that well, I did smoke one with me. I did make him smoke one, even if it was two fourteen. Two. He hit a fucking joint with me. God damn it! And I was because that was after old girl told me he don't smoke. I'm like, you kidding? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you kidding me? Uh-huh. You gonna smoke with me? God damn it! Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, just you know that that was crazy. I didn't know that. Now D Lo smoke, and the rest yeah. of the group they they smoke. Yeah, but crazy shit, man. It's, yeah, a lot know. of people just say X was just an actor, which he was. He was Johnny Bravo on a Maury show or whatever. Well, here's the thing, though. Here's another thing I realized. I didn't know X was older than the rest of us. Yeah. I'm 48. X is like 52, 53, something like or, that. No, he's older. I think he's about like 55 or 56 now. Right. Maybe. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh. So he didn't older, know how yeah. to. He didn't know how to. I guess because he know how to. He old. That nigga, he old nigga. I guess. I look at certain niggas and I'll be like, yeah, he never, he never switched gears. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. He never. Right. Time. You know what right. I'm saying? He didn't adjust. Uh, just real quick, like re- re- random question. I wonder if uh, his that character he portrays that Johnny Bravo. Do you know if that's before or inspired by that cartoon, that Hanna Barbera cartoon? Definitely. I, was, I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I wonder if they. I wonder if they like that was just a persona that was out there, like this lady, lady like smoozing dude, or like I wonder if like they straight ripped off. Brad, Brad Xavier playing Johnny Bravo and turn that into a cartoon for kids. I don't know. Uh, you know what? My son used to watch that shit. That was a he, little before. He has he, He's like the parallels, dude. The name, the dude's got the blonde hair. Right, right. That's true. 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 And X, and X has always had his hand in like the Hollywood scene, so it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me. Yo, that's my man. Listen, no matter what I say about any of them. I swear to God, I got love for all of them. I'm just talking from E-Man's point of view because, you know, yo, man, I helped set it off with him. Yeah. And and it's it just it's just weird. 20, what what are we, guys, 20 years later? Mm-hmm. So 22. It's, yep. it's a lot. It was a lot that went on and still going on. 
and 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 they're not even together as a, a group. They're not even together. Pac's gone, rest in peace. Yeah. And you know, Saint in jail, rest free Saint dog. Is yeah. Right. It just it's crazy at this point. This fucking group should be together. You know, really uh, uh, taking victory laps. Rest in peace, Nip Nip Straight up, point. hey, yeah. You you think what's what's transpired of the group would almost bring them together at this point? And it's real tragic hey, that it has. Perfect. Does that to the greats and and fuck that underground they greats underground yeah. I'm gonna give them that fuck that yeah. people might not say no don't put them up there with the BC boys and them but nigga do you know how many people I, I to to white people and I say you heard the guy about Gabe yeah and I don't say right. no more I don't go into I produce them isn't that I just yeah. ask them if they know they say yeah man listen listen here man yeah so it's gonna be more to this man it's got to be more to their legacy. There, no. there is, you know what, E man? I think a lot of it is. It's, it's just e, uh, D Loke getting over his own ego, man. We were talking about in the last episode. Jerry was saying how, uh, like, he just had like these unrealistic expectations for the group, and he's just not, he's not willing to come with terms of like being an underground like king. Well, here's what I would, I, I, I have dreamed about, fellas, and I, I, I've wished I could have done it. At, at probably either session with him on either album, but I dreamed about this, man. I need to fucking sit in the studio with him. Yeah. You know I, mean? I need to sit in the studio with them, vibe with them, and 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 talk to them and tell them and just give them the motherfucker some 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 different direction. Cause I felt like if I had been more on hands as a producer and more with them cats. I probably could have swayed him to see things a different way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, like Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre to them to his people that he blew up because man, we blew up. Yeah, yep. felt that we didn't get that connection, man. I'm gonna be honest. I was never in the studio when they lay vocals. How about that? Mm -hmm. How about that? Never. And I wish that I could have been, or maybe should have made sure my ass was there, just to bond with him more. And, and 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 rub off on them more. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just I'm just I'm I'm just fantasizing now. But yeah, I never got a chance to do that with them. And and to hear that that D Lo might have an ego. That nigga hard. That man. I I will, I will sit in the studio. I'll get in the studio with D Lo and say, and I bet you we'll come out 100 percent better, both of us. Hey, I think we can all agree on that. How sick would it? That's all we want, E man. Is if it to come full circle and. Uh... Just, I mean, spend time man, with him. Everybody, everybody shine in the studio with him because I I even heard him when they were slowing on records. Man, if I had been in the studio, I'd be like, yo, 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 go back. Let's do this again. Hold up, let's punch right. this here. Man, I dream, so I don't know. I I'm still dreaming, mm -hmm. and they still around. So I'm gonna get with him. I'm gonna get got, with him, man. We, we got to focus on getting Saint out. As soon as he's out, then we can go from there. Free Saint dog, free Saint dog. How long? How, when, when, when are he getting out? Uh, he's supposed to be out December, but you know how that what? goes. He, he'll he'll probably be out earlier. He'll probably okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, because hopefully they backed up and they gotta let him out. Yeah, you know? I mean, like the the hope is is anywhere from uh, June to August, but the re the actual release date was December. Um, but you know, like I said, you know how that shit goes. He'll probably be out early, dude. He'll you know what? Uh, hey, this this is on record. I'm finna dig. Well, I gotta get. I gotta get my uh, NPC put in the shop. I'm gonna have a fucking beat for Saint when he get out. I'm gonna just have one fucking hard beat. I want that nigga to make it coming out of jail like that. Hell yeah! Bless you, bless you, brother. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. I want to make a beat for Saint when that nigga come out yeah. and just just out the gate drop it like I don't jail. I'm out of jail, California dreaming. Saint's on the scene. Niggas better who be dreaming. What? <laughs> Oh, hell, oh a fuck, but hey, I appreciate y'all, man. Y'all don't know y'all. Y'all motherfuckers got me going. Oh, it's, yeah. it's been super funny, man. And like, like you said, we're gonna have to have you back for uh, some segments coming up, man. Because I know you just, you probably have no. endless. I yap so much because I was excited, but I promise you, I can even go back to when we dropped and tell y'all more stories and other shit. I, I, I had a lot of shit wrote down, but man, y'all, I, I, I love y'all because y'all. Keeping the shit going. Y'all gonna help write the rest of the pages in the history. 
Hey, uh, man, that, you know, th- that's uh, that, that means so much coming from you. And, Daniel, uh, you know, it's, 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 it, it's fun doing what we do. And you, uh, like we just we, we care about the legacy just as much, man. That's why we're doing it. And, man, I love it because I was like, I, I want them to know the beginnings of that funky shit. Because I'm telling you, them white boys, they tapped into something. They tapped into something. And, and man, let me tell you something. The rest is history. We just got to just figure it out and just finish writing it. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Shit ain't over. It ain't over. Not at all. It's not over. And I can't wait to tell you all about the radio show that I'm on every Sunday night. All of y'all, each one of y'all that I'm looking at, any artist y'all got, anything y'all want to promote, I don't give a fuck what it is. I'm on a radio show every night. Right at on. KXLU, at KXLU FM. Okay. Every right. Sunday night, I'm on the radio live. I go head to head with the beat, the power, KJ. I go to head to head with them. I'm on the live air with airwaves every okay. Sunday night. I've yeah. been fucking with them, drumming them. You remember right. them? Uh, yeah. that, uh, uh, what the fuck, you? Four finger ring music in them. You hear to them? What was that? Oh for? yeah, yeah. I think they might have had a song on the Chronicles. You know them. I, I, mean, I think I, so. I, I, I fuck with y'all, man. Please, any. I got a radio show. We'll talk about it later. But man, we got to get back on. We'll promote more shit. But absolutely. This kind of, King Legacy has got to continue, man, and you guys yep. are doing exactly what you're supposed to do, man, being the curators of this shit. Oh, well, th- well th- thank you so much for your time, first and foremost, E-Man, and uh, we look forward to talking with you again. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Thanks for coming on, bro. Yeah. I know I, I know I yapped a lot, but yo, no, man, that's, I That's man. what we hit you up for, man. We, <laughs> we, we can only get it from you. You're the only, I'm you know? A, a peace and love like I said, I know I might have sounded like I was shitting on certain people, but I'm just no. telling you what was going on behind the scenes. And there's more. We got to go back because I got to take you guys back to how everybody was getting fucked out their royalties, how uh, uh, Zinger was moving members out of the camp and replacing people and just all of this shit. It's more to go. It's a whole lot more, man. Yeah. It's a whole lot to go from, from 98 to 2008 alone before we get to 19. It's yeah, it's been 20 people. Yeah, a lot of these newer fans forget it. We're, we're at 22 years right now in. We, we Listen, we just tapped the surface, so yeah. again, man, I, I, I respect and appreciate you, young man. I, I, Jerry, all of y'all, Jacob, Daniel, please keep doing what y'all are doing. Come to the show. Come to my fucking show. Let's talk about it on my show. Let's do it anytime, man. I'm I'm in Riverside right here. I can I, I'd be happy to come out anytime. The show's at Loyola, Marymount University. Okay. You guys, and, and me and Jerry can roll out sometime. We're I think we're the only two local ones right here. It's mm-hmm. in Westchester. It's in Westchester at that at uh right there, Loyola Marymount. We're on the campus, man. Right on. Little yeah. young dot dots. Little young dot dot dots. Yeah. Hey, that'd be a, it'd be an honor, man. I ho- I hope I didn't run my mouth too much. Please. No. Get more questions for me next time. Let me shut the fuck up. Get some hey, questions you know, for me. <laughs> hey, and I, I think any uh, any fans that would like uh, any, it's, it's E-Man to answer any questions, maybe drop them in a comment below if you, uh, if you have anything you want us to bring up in another episode because we're definitely going to have to have you back. I got so much more to talk about. I just was so excited because it's been 20 years yeah. bottled up. 20 fucking yeah. years. So... Forgive me for 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 where I, wherever I went today, but fellas, let's Thank let's you. do a part two. I got much more to share about this this, this shit because Guy Mouth King ain't never gonna die. They'll mm-hmm. never die, and every mm-hmm. brand that that's associated with him, Southern Soldiers, SRH, every fucking thing, every every everything that's associated with it, it's not going nowhere. Yeah, and we're and we're here to just document it and uh, bring some never be told, never before told stories to the uh surface because you know like we there wasn't any social media back then so there wasn't any way to like really get a hold of people and really get to know besides what was put out through the music or through the the you know the uh, dvds uh what you saw at a show that was it so that was it mystery it was a whole mystery and i still have to get into the details of the production how we went in and did them songs. I just want you guys to know, you know, hey man, listen, E Man was around for a lot of Cottonmouth King's beginnings, Soldiers' beginnings. 
uh, dog boy, excuse me. Um, just a lot, man. I, they're dirt ball. Dirt ball's first single was "We Bad." Hey, did, uh, did you do too much on that? Uh, that first two rude CD that self titled. Yeah, did I did drop. I, I did yeah, drop. I got, I got a tattoo. I got a tattooed right here. Oh my god! This is dude here. I did drop by. The song was called "Drop By." Hey, that, that I love that one. That's a good one. That's the one I did, and that was one that they that again. That should have been a Cottonmouth song, but yeah. they gave it to him. Yeah, yeah, that, you got the key to my, I know that one. That song should have been a Royal Highness, but they gave it to Dog Boy. How about that? Oh, well, Dog Dog Boy gave them Dog's Life, so so they must have returned the favor because that that one oh, hey, back. that was that was a Cottonmouth King track for High Society, and they gave it to him. Wow. You got the key to my heart, dude. Yeah, yeah that was a kind of King track they bought for me for Royal, for High, for Royal Highness. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, again, I won't hold you. Guess what? I'm finna watch Canelo knock Jacobs out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about to watch about that. that shit too. Hey, I love y'all, man. Stay in touch with me. Let's do it again next Saturday if we can. Let's do part two. My right. pleasure. Anytime, you, man. Thank you for your time. Please get some questions for me so I can shut the fuck up and answer some shit. I got, I got, I got a lot to talk about. But again, twenty years it was bottled up. Y'all young, y'all young flames hit me, and I was excited. Hey, we are, we are just as, yeah, we are too, man. So I hope people enjoyed it. I appreciate you guys. Come off King forever, man. I love y'all. Holla, man. Let's get back and do part two. Please, Daniel, Jerry, Jacob, get some questions for me. I still got to promote and tell y'all what's going on in the future. And anybody you guys fuck with, holla at me. Let me put them on a radio show in the meantime. Yeah, absolutely. Right? And we'll make sure to link that on the YouTube to your radio we will. show. We will. Yeah. We will. I don't, I don't want to. I won't even yap it now. How you can find me and all that. No, we'll get back to that. Yeah, I'll just give me back on and continue. Exactly. Absolutely. We'll pick up where we left off. All right. Much love. Oh, shit. The All Kentucky right. Derby's on. Hell yeah. <laughs> much All love. Right, All right. All right, man. All right. Peace Thank out. you. Later. Thank you, fellas. Peace. Peace out.